So this week of the MOOC, Managing Responsibly, is on ethics. So we were talking a little bit about uh, what it actually means to manage the ethics of a company and how to make ethical decisions and uh, how to get into ethical action. And uh, it's my pleasure to now speak to Pia Poppenreiter, who is sitting in uh, Berlin. Pia will tell us a little bit more about um, the ethical topics in her business and how she's making decisions. Um, so Pia, very, very nice having you. Thank you very much for, for coming in. Uh, do you think you could just quickly sure. tell uh, us a little bit about what your business actually is uh, and what you're doing? So, hey everyone, I'm Pia. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Olala. And Olala is an app for paid dating. Uh, so we connect users to go on paid dates instantaneously um, in the safest way possible. So um, just a quick um, 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 story on how we came up with this. We founded Olala last year in March and we raised some money to, to finance um, the, the product development. We launched in August in Berlin and it went so well that we quickly took it to a couple of more cities in Germany. It's now all together seven and we, we um, started to, um, to take it abroad. That is New York City, US, um, actually last week. So that's the story behind. Yes, and it's quite a very, very uh, tricky topic um, and product that we developed. And I'm happy to be here and discuss it with you, Oliver. So, um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, how, how your business actually works and, uh, and maybe also a little bit about the history, how you got to what you're doing right now and what the idea and the thinking was behind it? Yeah, so I never wanted to be a founder. Uh, actually, I have a finance background um, and I worked in investment banking. I took a year off. I was a bartender. I did some soul searching and I ended up studying business as, uh, ethics or responsible management in Berlin. That's how I know you, Oliver. Um, and I worked at the Institute for a year um, and after graduation, I founded my startup. And um, so I never thought that I ended up in this space. I did. And what I'm very happy about is, is my educational background because I'm a very data-driven and structured person and I love finance. Um, but I also am so incredibly happy that I did study um, responsible management because finance gives the structure to work data-driven, but you know, having this ethics background helps me really um, put a framework around the product and the company so uh, that we all have a good feeling working here and that we have this um, framework on how to make our decisions properly in the best interest of the, of the product and the users. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that, um, that, that your ethics background or the courses you've taken and, and uh, the contents that you know somehow helped you making decisions uh, and also in terms of value. So do, do you have an example of something that, uh, like a situation where I actually thought it makes sense and, and it helps in a certain way? Yeah, so first of all, I have to say, <laughs> A full honesty right here when I was studying um, uh, it was quite abstract and I was like w quite a couple of times I thought what am I doing here how could I possibly ever use this for my further career and now looking back it was one of the best decisions and I'm not say I never say stuff to say stuff so I mean this really it's uh, from the bottom of my heart that I only found out like really a month and years later now that this is so valuable it helped me so far that you know when you study ethics it's so so abstract and you're going through the cases and you're like why are we discussing this and now I really think a lot back um, like how we, we we came up to evaluate situations and how we derive decisions like um, how I can put a structure around the product and the company and the people working here um, that they feel comfortable acting um, acting um, with their own set of values but still within the scope of what the values that we created for the company so um, I'm, I'm really glad I, glad I did it. And so um, with Olala, we're tackling a super tricky topic um, that is really stigmatized in public. And there's a lot of explaining and a lot of, um, 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 yeah, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of judgment that we have to deal with. And so um, I, I feel like that um, we have a solid foundation on how to deal with it um, for myself um, and also for the product. Because, I mean, it's a long story, but um, at the end of the day, um, you know, you can judge morally uh, based on your own morals, but that won't do for the whole company. So I, I'm glad I, I managed to create a system that works um, for the company, not just for myself. 
So, so how, how do you actually do that? Because I guess that's, uh, that's a number of different people with very different backgrounds and everyone believes in different things and thinks, different, uh, thinks differently about what is right and wrong. So how, how, how do you deal with that? I mean, how do you get everyone in the same boat and make it work for everyone? Yeah, so we're we are hiring right now, but as of today, we're a team of 17 people. Um, and what I really look for is, uh, it starts with the interview process, um, when I get to talk to the people that are applying to work with us. So I am trying to figure out whether or not this is a fit, um, not just on a, on a professional level, but also on a, on a more or less personal level. You can't be working here if you don't find, you know, find if you don't understand our vision and mission and is that is to connect people in the safest and fastest way possible so I'm checking whether or not um, those people are a fit and then we are really talking a lot about the, the issues and um, the ethical implications we actually do this on a weekly basis so that we constantly onboard the people and um, so and then again, we have. I mean, in the core of our own, uh, our whole being is that um, you know we we have some prefixed um, rules that we uh, constantly apply. That is, first of all, we honor the integrity of our users, and um, so and that is how we derive decisions. Meaning, maybe this is a little bit of ethics, but uh, maybe applying the golden rule, saying you know, if you were to be a user, would you want that? to be done to you and that is actually really th th fundamental to how we make decisions. So you already were mentioning basically two, uh, two different um, kind of tools and rules that you're using. So on the one hand um, you were talking about the golden rule like as a decision making, making rule that helps you in a certain way and you were also talking about um, th that the integrity of the users is apparently that's a very important value for what you're doing and it's apparently in uh, like a very central thing to your business as well. Um, so I'm wondering, you, you, you're a startup company, so it's a rather new business, it's a very new business. So usually in new businesses, like, yes. like the formal structures are not there because it's new, basically. So yeah. I, wa I wondered, yes. uh, have, you, have you thought about doing something uh, like, like formalizing those things in terms of like having like a code of ethics or, or like a value statement for what you do? Or um, you said you have a meeting where you talk about these topics as well, like making that a formal thing. Have you, have you thought about that? And do you think it makes actually sense? So startups are quite crazy. What you've just, I mean, actually, we did have a code of ethics in place actually the first month. It was just us something that we needed to sit. So when you this is how you start a company, you have co-founders. You need to sit down and talk, discuss how you see the world, how you want to see the product, and where it should go, to, like had to. And then you really needed to be aligned, and you wanted to go into the same direction. So. Ethics was a huge component uh, right at the beginning, and we are still um, um, having. Um, I mean, we do have our mission and vision statement in place, um, uh, and we are constantly communicating this. Um, but you're right. Uh, this right now, the phase we're in, as we've closed our um, finance round uh, just recently in December, so now we're in the phase of really professionalizing the whole um, um, ethics within the company. Yeah, that's actually what we are doing right now. Yeah, yes. yeah. So it's a, it's a very early stage for doing that, actually. It feels like uh, most companies probably get there much, much later. Um, so that, that's a very interesting, good thing. Do, uh, do you have an explanation for, for why you're so, so early on that? I mean, obviously, uh, there's a lot of talking about our product. And um, I think one of the most important aspects of understanding what we're doing is that we have the right intentions and um, uh, a very ethical approach to it and I think that users feel it um, and also people you know reading about Olala because in every step of the way may, may it be how we pick um, new employees or team members or how we pick a new feature we have this um, ethical key component in it and so it's so important they want to really um, start um, working on this I mean this especially holds true because we're we are tackling such a socially critical um, um, uh, topic that um, we needed to ensure that ethics is the foundation of everything. You almost have, also probably in your own con uh, uh, communication, you almost must have some, uh, some kind of uh, like a position on the different topics that might come up and, and explain why, why, where that decision comes from and why you're doing as a business what you're doing. 
Um, so is, is that something that where, where you sit down and just, just say, okay, so why are we doing this? What, what's the decision? Or is it more something that develops out of the, the communications you're having? How, how does that happen? How I do it, actually, I mean, we do have stakeholders and we kind of like, um, you know, try to um, see which ones are very important to us or which are priority number one or two or three. So, I mean, obviously people um, work, so first of all, it's, you know, we, we develop a product for our users. So, you know, one of our most important stakeholders is the users actually. And uh, we always um, try to make decisions based on the best interests of, of the users. And then, you know, it's people working with Olala, within the team, building the product is one of our most important stakeholders, so to say. So we go through all our stakeholders. I mean, I actually do this, um, that's my job. But, um, you know, every time we're discussing anything, I just like in my mind go through all the stakeholders and see if I can balance the interest because it's so many times a conflict of interest. Um, but at the end of the day, we do decide uh, in the best interest of the product so and the users. Um, yeah, but this is how I kind of like try to frame it um, a bit. Yeah. It's interesting because it makes me think also about one of uh, one of your posts I've seen um, where apparently um, there's a, a French um, region that, that has um, oh la la is their slogan for, for, for attracting people for vacations, right? Um, so that, that, I thought that was an interesting point. Not, probably these are not, uh, they're probably not even on your stakeholder list in a, cer in a certain way. So that's something where you don't have to worry too much about. Um, but how, how do you deal with that kind of kind of side issues, those kind of little funny things that come up and uh, what, what do you do? So actually that issue wasn't even on my radar. You'd be surprised how many things you have to deal with running a startup. Uh, it's just simply crazy. Um, but if you address that issue, um, that was uh, a, just quite a different motivation. So one, we're not operating in France. Um, so Two, um, we didn't. So we, if there was to be um, filed a trademark for this, uh, we would be operating in different industries. So actually, what they did is they never talked to us and they never dropped an email. What they tried to do is jump on our media coverage um, and uh, because we ranked higher. Yes, that's actually what was their intention because we ranked higher on search and uh, on the search engines like Google than they did and we were up and running for like a couple of days so you know they tried to get some media attention. But, but that's an interesting point as well because um, you think you're talking about, about like social topics, moral topics, ethical topics but then very often there are some kind of commercial considerations behind it as well as, as in the case that you were just mentioning them just trying to hop on the, the media hype and, and getting a little bit of extra for free publicity on that. Um, <laughs> So, so I wonder if you're in a startup, um, I, I guess the, what, what must be on your mind all the time is probably growth and survival because startups are, are per se a very unstable thing. So probably that's the thing, things that have to make you tick in order to survive in a certain way. Um, so so how, how do you do manage the, that tension that, that then there, there are these ethical topics coming in as well which might not be as high on the agenda or do they go somehow together? How, how do you bring those dimensions together? like the commercial and the ethical um, one, if you want to. So I think to some extent, ignorance is bliss. And um, I, I know who I am and I know who we are at Olala and I know the product. Um, so uh, that is the foundation of all my argumentation. And if I'm being criticized, I think that is a lot of times due to a lack of understanding or miscommunication. So I really always try to find out um, what you know the, the, the problem is actually, and um, then try to discuss it and just maybe invite the other person or the audience whatsoever to question how they view the world, not saying that I'm right. It's just one perspective that I have. And I just wanted to invite people to reconsider how they view the world. That's actually my approach without telling them what they have to think. So um, yes. And um, that's what we are doing. Wow. No, I think you're doing, doing something very, very exciting there and particularly giving, uh, giving you a background as well, coming from uh, finance first and then going over to a responsible management and then becoming an entrepreneur and doing a startup. Uh, I think it's just fascinating. And I, I wonder how you as a, as a person, like as an individual feel about that whole development and how uh, also that kind of criticism that, that, you're, that you're getting as a company and, and the situations that, that you mentioned. So how, how does that, that make you feel and how do you deal with that personally? 
so um, I know who I am and that my intentions are good. <laughs> uh, and um, I think that what we are doing, and this is what you have to deal with when you, you are especially starting a socially tricky topic, um, it sometimes takes a while for people to understand what you really want to accomplish. And there's only a little amount of information that people get, but not the full picture. And at the end of the day, honestly speaking, um, uh, I, I just hope that, you know, maybe a couple of years down the road, people do know what I was up to and what my intentions were. And until then, I knew what I was getting myself into and that not everyone's going to be totally fine with this day one. It's just that I believe over time, um, connecting the dots, uh, it will make sense what we are doing. Excellent. Well, um, I think we, we've gone through, through all of the topics, topics that I wanted to mention, basically. I wonder if there's anything else that, that you would like to bring up, anything else that you would like to comment on the topic itself. Yeah, I mean, so maybe that's a little bit of a thought that I could um, address specifically because we've been very, we've been talking a bit abstract about what Olala is doing. And um, maybe a thought on this, how we are actually trying to change something and the industry. Um, and um, so we're, all the last people, um, is connecting people to go on paid dates. And what ha what's happening on a date is a private matter. So there's a lot of guessing going on, which we are never going to confirm. But people do blame us for all kinds of things. Um, why is that? And that's actually an interesting question why people wanted to be so curious about finding out what's happening as we have payment um, as a mechanism. And so what we learn is the way we are designing the product and how we're communicating and having ethics as a foundation um, is a very new concept on how to address this issue. And so we tried to set up and develop the product in a way that no one at Olala has to ever lie about what's going on here. And we've designed the process that um, we really don't know what's happening. And I'm not saying this for marketing reasons. And I'm not making anyone lying uh, uh, here at Olala lying about this. So, you know, we created the product in a way that we don't have access or the people working here don't have access. They don't know what really is happening. So it's a little bit of benefit of a doubt and... Um, so that was very interesting for us to find out. Uh, the tricky thing was is to, to develop a product that we still feel good about, that no one ever has to lie about it, and is designed in a way um, that, um, yeah, it, 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 um, it, it, it makes sense to talk about it, but not talk about it. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense, uh, which is a, bit, a little bit of uh, abstract, but... Um, yeah, and I think that um, it's so interesting for us to have really the chances um, to to rethink or reframe how people think about some social um, topics. And it's just um, what I can say about myself is I never had the great money when I started off. So that's not an excuse to try and change something. It was just um, two or three people sitting in a living room and creating this idea and then looking for people who would actually finance that. Um, so uh, I, in the future, if at all, I put my reputation and everything I had at risk and it was the best decision I've made, no matter what, whatever is going to happen. And uh, I'd like to be at least a role model for people who, um, who are um, just for people to go and dare something. Uh, and uh, I want to be a Roman a little bit in so far that, it, you know, anything's possible uh, and that we might as well try. Yeah, and enjoy the ethics studies. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe one day you will need it. Well, let's see then. Um, <laughs> Well, well, thank you very much, Pia. I think what, what you said at the end was, was very, very interesting because um, you were, uh, when you were talking about openness and not, not having to lie, basically, that's another ethical topic. So, so be, being open and honest, right? So that's one of the values that you might want to have. Um, and uh, as, yes. as you explained, that you have actually built it into the design of your company and, and of what you're doing. So it's something um, that is in the structure already, which is uh, probably the best way of doing it instead of having like an additional code of ethics here and like an ethics hotline there and, and tagging it on on something that exists, making it rather part of what it is from the very beginning and, and putting it into the very middle of everything. Um, so thank you very much for that. So, 
so maybe a first step uh, or one of many steps towards being that uh, that kind of role model. Thank you very much. Uh, Pia Poppenreiter, CEO of Olala uh, from Berlin with us. Thank you very much, Pia, and we'll see you soon then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.